Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this Blender Physics tutorial where we see how to create this ink effect. I made two versions. The first, it's ink that dissolves faster in the water. And the second, it's kind of ink that takes more time to dissolve and has more details. So let's see how we can do it. And the first thing we want to do is set Blender to Cycles and select GPU in the Render tab. And if this does not appear to you, you want to make sure that you go to File, User Preference and in System you have CUDA. And we are going to use this default cube, which is going to be our container. And we need to scale it up with S two times and in the Y axis we can also scale it up two times. Move it a bit up and scale it also in the X axis, like this. Now we can already go to the physics tab right here and this effect is made with a smoke physics system. So we can go ahead and press this button that says smoke and select domain, which basically means it's going to be our smoke container. And now we are going to need a flow or in other words, something that will emit smoke and for that we can use a sphere with something like six segments and six rings scale it down a value of 0.1 and now that we have this sphere that represents our ink drop we need to animate it and make sure it enters the container so let's put it above our box like this and make sure it's in the center of the container let's open the dope sheet down here and with I, we can keyframe the location in the frame 0. And around the frame 20, we can move it down like this and insert another keyframe. Now we can press Alt A to play and again Alt A to stop. Maybe move it a bit down and keyframe it again. Ok, that's good, that looks good, but the animation you saw in the beginning at 60 frames and it was so smooth you know and if you want to make a 60 frame animation you can go to the render tab and here you can select 60 frames but now if you press shift a to play again you can see it's too fast which means we need to move these keyframes from the frame 20 to somewhere around like 60 or 50 maybe 40 so it doesn't look that fast And now, when you have a movement that you like, we can go to the physics tab again and select smoke. And this time we can click on flow. And we want to check the initial velocity. So this way the smoke follows the initial velocity or the movement of the object. And this option that says temperature difference will allow us to control the temperature of the smoke. And hot hair or hot smoke will tend to go up faster. But if it's cold, it doesn't go up, which is what we want. The ink when dropped in the water keeps going down. So we want to set this to zero. One last thing for our smoke emitter, or in other words, for our flow object, is this sampling parameter. And we want to set these subframes to 32, because this works in the following way. These are subframes that we are going to add between the frame 1 and 2, between the frame 3 and 4, and so on. It's basically adding frames between every frame, which will give a sensation of a more realistic simulation. Now let's go to our container and the divisions influence the detail of the ink. So the higher the resolution, the more details we will have, but it will be slower when simulating, which is not good for our previews. And for now, we want to keep this around 32 so we can get fast previews. And then comes the parameter called Vorticity, which will control the amount of swirls, basically if the smoke rolls too much or not. And mine was set to 3 or maybe 2, but if you don't want any swirl, just set this to 0. 
Now turn on smoke adaptive domain, which basically will allow a blender to bake faster. And now in the smoke eye resolution, it's a very important parameter and we want to turn on this one, because this will allow us to create a simulation with more detail. And this trend parameter of the velvet controls the amount of swirls once more, just to give a nice detail to our ink. And I like this setting to be around 2, but again, if you don't want swirls, you can set this to 1 or to 0. And finally, the smoke cache, which is where we are going to bake. But it's probably grey, like this, and this happens because we haven't saved our scene. And why we need to save the scene? Because when we press the bake button, Blender needs to create a folder with files that contains the information of our simulation. And we can also change the file type to open VDB, which will require less space in our disk. And now, to have small preview, let's say we want to bake 60 frames and press bake. And we have some movement already. I'm just gonna bake 90 frames to show you that the smoke keeps going down and that's not really good. We want to give the sensation that the water offers some resistance to the ink. And for that we are going to create, with Shift A, a force field, which will be the turbulence. And we want to set the strength to 10. And the size can be 0.8. This depends a little bit on the size of your container, of your scene. And in flow we want to set this to 1. Now I'm gonna bake and maybe I have to increase the strength to something like 15, maybe it's too much. You have to play around to find a good value until you find the right strength and size. Ok, so now we want more ink in the beginning, at least in my simulation, and we also want the spheres to stop emitting smoke. And for that we are going to animate this value here. Let's go to the frame 0 and now we press in the surface with the right click mouse and choose insert keyframe. And now around the 24 frame we want to increase this value and insert again a keyframe. And it's the 24 frame because it's when the sphere enters the container. And I decided that when the sphere enters the container I want more ink in the beginning. And at around 60 we want to stop the ink emission or the smoke emission. So we set this value to 0 and we keyframe it with the right click mouse. We have to play a little bit around with these values to see what fits best and do some more tests. Now I'm gonna increase in the Y axis our container so the smoke doesn't touch the ground. And now we want to put our camera in a nice place to capture the ink dropping. So let's in the viewport find a good position for the camera and after you have found it, you can press Ctrl Alt 0 for the camera to come to the viewport position like this. Ok, so after finding a good position for the camera, you can go back and forward while you are in your camera by pressing 1 time G and 2 times Z like this. So it only moves on the local Z. You can also change the focal length of the camera to have more amplitude and in this camera icon I choose it something like 30 for the focal length. Ok, let's, so let's go ahead and duplicate this sphere like this, make sure to be in the frame 0 and press I to insert a keyframe on the location and rotation. Let's also go to the frame 40 where the ball enters the container and stops keyframe when the ink drops in a straight vertical line, like this. Now basically do the same for the third ink, duplicate it, keyframe it in the beginning of our animation and keyframe again when the ink stops. You basically have now to create some variation and make sure that the, not all the ink drops at the same time and uh, not at the same velocity, one enters faster and the uh, other one enters a little bit slowly. Just create some variation and never forget to keyframe it. And now we want to proceed to the creation of the material. And we can come down here to open the node editor. And with the container selected, let's move to the material tab. 
and we can rename this material to ink material. And now we press use notes and this diffuse shader is not going to be needed since we are going to render volume and not a surface, which means we are going to use these two nodes for volume. And let's start by creating the volume absorption that it's going to be connected to the volume. We can change the color to something that you like. And you can press Shift Z to preview and we actually see that the wall container is blue. And also we can change the background color by pressing this globe icon and press use nodes. Now you can basically choose any color that you want. I'm gonna set this to white. Now back to the ink material. We want to use an attribute node. An attribute node works with strings, which means we have to type in a keyword for things to work out. And the node attribute, as you can see, can receive these words. And the first thing we can read is density, which is used in a domain object to control the density of the smoke inside the domain. And there are a couple of more words that you can check it out if you want. And now we go back to Blender and we can press Shift A to create the attribution node, which is in the input section. Let's already connect the factor output to the density in the volume absorption. And we can go ahead and type in density. And as soon as you do it, the magic happens and Blender starts rendering the calculated volume inside the container. But as you can see, the opacity is not really strong and to control the opacity we can use the math node which will allow us to multiply the density by the value we set here we have to select multiply and that's great because now we can play with the density of our smoke we also have a problem here that the spheres are being rendered and to change that we can select the spheres and go to the object separator and at the bottom, where it says Cycle Settings, we want to uncheck Ray Visibility to Camera, Volume Scatter and Shadows. Do this for each sphere you have. Finally, let's add the Volume Scatter in the ink material so it doesn't look too much like smoke. And we will also need the Add Shader node to connect both of the volume's shaders. Now we only need to connect the Multiply node to the density of the Volume Scatter and we get a more realistic ink effect. And that's pretty much it guys, now you can play with the color and when you think it's good, you can basically go to the container, increase the resolution and bake. And now in the render tab, choose the output, the format and the amount of samples. And that's basically it, now you press animation and it's done guys. You have created an ink dropping in the water effect. So thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it, subscribe for more Blender tutorials and game development tutorials and see you in the next tutorials.